Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Meanwhile Here on Earth. This program features in-depth conversations with the leading names in the subjects of UFOs, abductees, the paranormal, panel discussions, and the very best and brightest of the next generation of writers and researchers. Meanwhile, here on Earth, the show breaking new ground in alternative talk with your intrepid host, veteran investigative writer and researcher, Peter Robbins. Good evening, morning or afternoon, depending on where you're listening to us. Welcome to Meanwhile Here on Earth, as you just heard in the mellifluous voice of Mr. Race Hobbs, our producer. If you're listening to our show but would rather be watching it, you can do so on KGRA's Facebook page or go to YouTube, type in KGRA, then Meanwhile Here on Earth, and it will come up. Become a KGRA subscriber and you can follow all of their terrific shows endlessly. And there are about 80,000 of them from what I understand from the last official count. We're going to dispense with our monologue tonight and go right to our guest for the evening, Luis, Thiago Luis Chiquetti, whose father was a pilot in the Brazilian Air Force, has been researching the UFO phenomena for more than 25 years. He is co-editor and columnist for Revista, UFO Magazine, and columnist for UFO Truth Magazine in the UK. Luis has, been, ha, has published dozens of articles for UFO magazines and foreign publications. He's the author of 13 books and is currently the president of the Brazilian Commission of Ufologists and MUFON National Director in Brazil. Tiago holds a degree in business administration and executive MBA from the Brazilian Institute of Capital Markets. He lives and works in Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, uh, where he lives with his wife and two beautiful children. Beautiful wife and two beautiful children. His, web oh, his website, and I'm going to go over this again at the end, where you're ready to take it down with a pen or pencil. I investigator. I'm, I'm going to just <laughs> read the letters. I-N-V-E-S-T-I-G-A-C-A-O-O-V-N-I dot com dot B-R for Brazil. Thiago Luis Chiquetti, my dear friend, it is a pleasure to welcome you to Meanwhile here on Earth. How are you doing this evening? Hello, Peter. Thank you very much to have me here. <laughs> Very nice to see you again. We are friends since ever. We met in <laughs> 2013, but the, we I think that we met in uh, past lives. So ah. we are so connected. <laughs> Thank ah. you to have me here. <laughs> it is my pleasure. And uh, you may be right. Um, our connection was very deep and immediate when we met in the south of Brazil, um, a place where you had been before and I had never been before, to put it mildly. <laughs> um, one of the, the reasons I wanted to have you on the show, besides the fact that you are, I was going to say, one of the fastest rising stars in ufology south of the American border is, first, there, even for people knowledgeable in the work in America, we have something of a blackout of knowledge of what is going on on a regular basis in South America, Central America. Uh, Brazil is a very active country. Also, for me, especially in this moment in time where um, UFOs are ubiquitous, they're all over the place. You can't turn on the news without hearing about them. I don't know if it is the same in Brazil now, where it has always been more open subject, but of course you are aware of how it has become an obsession here in America with the release of this first report from the Pentagon, which is not a great deal of information, but just the act of releasing it has kind of changed the culture a bit. Um, it, you are aware, obviously, of that release, but 
Brazil is a much more open country historically on this subject as far as the government goes. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Uh, Brazil's, Brazil has a, a, a background of ufology research official. We had already four official research made by the Brazilian government and Brazilian militaries. And, uh, well, we never kept, a, of course, they have secrets uh, here in Brazil that we're still looking for. But the most part of the Brazilian cases and something that happens into the ufology is released to, to Brazilian uh, society. So I think we, we are very lucky for that. But we're still looking for more information of certain cases, of course. Absolutely. Um, I guess also what I wanted to say is with all of this commotion, with all of this activity, with all of this hyper uh, focus on this aspect of things in America, um, we are not losing sight of, but I think we forget sometimes that for some of us, the most important thing for us here and now whatever is going on up there, wherever they come from, whatever they have for breakfast, however long they've been coming and going, to acknowledge the reality that we are not alone in the universe, that there are other intelligences, whether they come from way out there or are right next to us right now, one seated next to you, one dimension away in your room, another right here next to me with my cat enjoying our conversation that an acknowledgement, a full disclosure, at least a full public awareness, or even a critical mass could change the culture of the world, that the potential exists for us to think of ourselves, not first as Brazilians, Americans, Russians, Canadians, Chinese, Japanese, whatever, but as human beings. And that would be the most radical shift. It could actually help to bring the world together, hopefully in a more peaceful way, and understanding that we have more in common than that we have more different. And our connection, the fact that you have come to, an Amer to America, have an appreciation of this culture, that Richard and I, among other people, uh, Dolan and I, um, and other people who, um, A.J. Javard, uh, who we met through, the brilliant uh, Brazilian ufologist and conference organizer, brings us together, that we are in the process of potentially creating a better world through connections on this subject. I go on a little bit too much, but would you agree with my basic thought there? Yes, yes, I agree. Uh, I think we... we only gonna 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 act like human being like a, a, a one planet if uh, we we had the, the evidence the certain that we're not alone I think that most people believe that we're not alone in the universe the, I think the harder is to believe that they're coming to our, our, our planet because one you know, of the science we, we're still not sending uh, uh, nobody to Mars we still almost sending someone to Mars, but we send a, a man to the moon. But uh, I think that we only gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, change this mind so selfish as a, as a American, as a, a North American, as a Brazilian, as a, a, a Japanese, when we get uh, to the reality that we are not alone. Yeah. then we're gonna we're gonna be a, a planet a human a human kind yeah i think um one of the things that stands in the way here and one of the reasons that what we will call first world governments the most powerful most controlling governments like the united states government does not want this kind of connection between people is governments are run in part on nationalism your super loyalty to your own government, that if you cross the line or even look at the line too hard, you are my enemy and I must kill you or get in your face. 
and we we cannot expect again first world governments no matter what is happening with this token report right now in america to be forthcoming at least under the current conditions and one thing well a number of things struck me when i i visited your country um is a very different culture than america americans like to think of ourselves many of us do um a melting pot people from all over the world come here after we make ourselves safe by wiping out our indians we have a chance to uh, move forward in our our dreams of fake equality which is sometimes real equality <laughs> but in brazil the first thing i noticed was um and i i knew a little about the culture but there is nothing like being another place forget what you are reading or learning from a documentary that first i look around me at the conference in the town on the streets uh doing a little tourism and everybody is every possible color that human skin can have um when you go to a restaurant that has a buffet and these things are very telling for me uh and at first i was quite giddy i i I'm, i understood why this would be but still there is a, the food that has come out of the brazilian culture um out of the native cultures out of um the cultures of Spain and other countries that were first at Portugal um but there is the german food the italian food the chinese food the japanese food 10% of all brazilians are of japanese extraction and families intermarry very comfortably and for me one of the great educations was just sitting at these restaurants and you know them they're right in the area where the conference was looking at these families where there are people as black as black can be with people that look very japanese with people that obviously look northern european other ones who are indigenous looking i was very knocked out by this and at the conference once again american conferences it's just the way it is i hope it changes more and more as time passes it is mostly white guys and <laughs> occasionally we have people of color in asian descent people thankfully more and more women but it is still dominated by one race and one can argue that well maybe white people have overall a little more um uh, discretionary spending luxury of spare time are being abducted at a higher rate although why they want us so much i don't know um but in the conference there was everybody that i saw on the streets and i wondered one of my first questions before we we go into uh talking about how um thiago luis chiquechi became the person he is um is would you say a wider cross section of the population of brazil is more interested in this subject takes it more seriously is more open to it than we might find here in america i think so well uh we we are a uh, multi race uh people we we have people from all of the the world we are the second place in the world with more japanese we just lose to japan <laughs> so we have Italians, we have Germans. Well, Brazil is is a big country. I know it's smaller than you, uh, United it's, States. It is a big in, country, though. Yes, <laughs> smaller than in than like United States, of course. But uh, we receive people from all of the place, and uh, I think one of the on the mark of our culture is that we are always happy. We are always we of course we have great problems. We still have an big problems here in Brazil, political, economical, uh, social. We have we are, but we never lose or smile. We never will treat bad something that comes to Brazil. Uh, one thing, and I'm not saying nothing bad uh, about uh, other countries, but uh, when someone comes to Brazil we try 
to understand your language. When we go to another place, when we go to France, to United States, when you go to Mexico, when you go to Japan, we have to speak other language. No one speak Portuguese to, to try to understand us. Just a little bit, you know. But when you come to Brazil, we, we, we figure out some, somehow to understand you. If you want to go to take a, a bus, we try to make some gestures, some, something like that to understand you. So uh, I think this, all this culture, all, all this multiple culture that we have in Brazil makes our mind much more open yeah. than, uh, than uh, other countries. I uh, thank you for bringing that up because it was an immediate reminder to me also as somebody who grew up in, in New York City in great part, but also has had the opportunity to travel quite a lot in my lifetime, I was struck by this fact that when you walk down a street overall, it can be a small street, it can be a big street with a lot of people in the city. People are, their faces are more open. They will make eye contact with you. They will smile more easily. Uh, exchanges people immediately get more comfortable. Also, uh, and this is more an abstract, but people seem more comfortable in their bodies. Um, you see, I am a man. I love women. I observe women whenever I can. And walking down a street, I see somebody who in American culture, I might say, oh, well, I'm going to be a little critical here, you know, too heavy, too skinny, uh, whatever, as opposed to you look very comfortable in your body and you are rocking it. You look great. You know, you're wearing something that is great on you. Uh, it seems like a healthier sexuality and people just, um, again, more comfortable in their bodies. For me, um, this is something that is missing in many parts of America and many parts of the world, of course. Yeah, we, we have this problem uh, here in Brazil, uh, this this matter about the, the, the body shape. We do have, I, I think it's... Ah, good but, point. Oh, the fixation for some segment of the population on cosmetic surgery. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think the most part of Brazilians are, are very happy with how we look like. I, 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 I and the, and the, and the, and the, and the you you had the opportunity to see how happy we are if we are if we are poor if we're rich media class uh, uh, media uh, media class uh, so uh, I think well it's very <laughs> uh, to me speak about Brazilian I think it's <laughs> very it's not it's not fair it's not fair <laughs> <laughs> well I just wanted to also comment. All of the plastic surgery you have had has come out very good. We have the best surgeons, <laughs> plastic surgeons in the world. Um, when when I have a guest who is going to come on, of course, we talk on the phone first. We think about what we're going to do, how we're going to approach it. Um, I knew from when we met that for you, like for me, the most important thing in your life is not ufology, as important it is, is your family. And it was immediately reflected in the way that you interact with people for me. And so I was not surprised that like many of my guests, the pictures we're gonna look at now to start with, um, give us a sense of you growing up and in your family. Um, we're gonna begin with one here of a very cute baby. You know who this is? It's a naked for the, the YouTube gonna gonna shut us down. <laughs> but that's me. That's me. I think uh, I, I I was with a four month four months old. Um, <laughs> white, so white, man, <laughs> so white. <laughs> I I must ask you in the interest of uh, full disclosure. <laughs> This can over here on the left. What is in this can? Oh, it's a it's a pounder. I think it's a oh, pounder. Oh, okay. I I thought it was a beer, and it might be your beer, no. and I was going to get me critical. 
Okay, that's good. You answered the question. Fine. We move on. Uh, that's me, my brother. I, I'm three years older than my brother. My brother uh, Diego, and he's uh, the blonde one. I'm the yeah. I'm the brown one. We are <laughs> the, in this in this photo. We were living in Natal, is the capital of uh, Rio Grande do Norte state. It was uh, we live uh, in in an Air Force base. Uh, uh, it was in Parnamirim. The house that was in Parnamirim, the Air Force base in Brazil. Yes, um, of course. Your father was not just in the Brazilian Air Force; he was a pilot. Yes, we we move it a lot. We move it a lot in Brazil. That is um, quite a life. And this beautiful woman is your mother. It's my mom. This this picture was uh, took in, in Natal as well. I think it was 1977, 78, something like that. Um, you lived as as most military families do in a residential area. About how old were you when you started to realize that your father flew aircraft? That has to be for a boy a terribly exciting moment, you know. Wow. I think since I was a, a, a little boy, I, I have pictures uh, inside my, my father's aircraft. So I was two years old, three years old, this one. Wow. It's my, my, my father's uh, aircraft, Chavante, 8026 Chavante. is a Brazilian uh, aircraft fighter. And uh, I had the same same. Uh, 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 Cloth of my father. Yes. Oh. Uh, I I I love this photo. How can anybody not love this photo? <laughs> Your too. father has such an open, kind, wonderful face. There's no mistaking it for me. Oh, my father. Uh, uh, he was amazing to 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 me, my brother, my father, and my mother. They they love us, loved us very very much. We never. Uh, had had any kind of problems with them we we, we live with them a, a very a very uh, not so long but uh well yeah he they they always loved us in all the ways well this my brother when and he was born <laughs> uh, <laughs> look my hair so so beautiful my hair now it's you know <laughs> Uh, 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 I had uh, so much hair. <laughs> yeah, this only happens in Brazil, not in America. We keep the hair that we have when we are very young. It's very tragic where you are. Uh, yeah, and this one uh, uh, was in Santa Maria. Santa Maria is a city boy. in uh, Rio Grande do Sul State. It's another Air Force base. And my father was in this time, he was a captain. He was a captain. Uh. And this... Uh, this we, we were wearing the same clothes he, he was to wear use it to to wear when he was flying that is it's so cool that yeah is so cool i love it your father died when you were quite young didn't he yeah my father died my mother died uh when i was 17 uh, and my father when i was 18. good lord can i ask you what happened that's devastating yeah my mother uh died because of cancer she uh -huh. had bre 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 uh, breast cancer. Yeah. And my father, because of AIDS. Oh, he for got gosh AIDS. Sake. Yes. And uh, well, in, in 1993, so AIDS appeared in 1985. So, 1993, yeah. we, we had the, the AZT, the, the medication, AZT, the, the complex of medication, AZT, yeah. but it was very expensive, very, very expensive. Uh -huh. But uh, he got, but was, you know, there's no no, no way. Uh, it, it was almost the same time that uh, uh, Magic Johnson got the AIDS. Uh. But he had all the, you know, uh, the medications and something that he could, he's still alive. He's still exactly. alive. Exactly. We don't, we don't have that lucky. 17 and 18, one of the most formative periods of time in your life for, for you. And it is now just you and your younger brother. What happens to you? Where do you go to live? How does your life proceed at this moment? 
Well, uh, when my mother and my, my father died, they were divorced. My mother was already married again, and ah. uh, she, she had a, a daughter. And my father married again, and uh, he had uh, uh, twins, twin sister. I have twin sisters. Oh. So my mother and my, and my father have me and my brother. And uh, my mother, if my and my step my stepfather has my my little sister Maria. It's not so little anymore. <laughs> wow! And my father had two uh, twins, Michelle and Dominique, who lives in in Argentina. And uh, was well uh, after they, they 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 died. I moved to 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 England. I live spent some time in England. Oh. And my brother went to São Paulo to live with my my grandma grandma and my grandfather my of my my father's part my father's fathers and uh, my father's parents and uh, i stay six eight months in england and then come back to rio de janeiro where i live and then i moved to brasilia because my aunt is uh the tutor uh of me because i was under 21 so we had to have an adult to take care of me Wow. Um, we now go to this photo, also again, um, from childhood. Yes. That is you in the upper left? Yes, yeah, that's me playing soccer. It was a, it's a condom that I live in, 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 in Rio de Janeiro, Barra Marish. And uh, there's my friends, we are, we are playing a tournament in, in Rio de Janeiro. I, I was quite good. I was quite good. I'm not soccer. surprised. I'm not <laughs> surprised. Although, uh, again, my message to you yesterday, uh, it is a dark moment in the world of Brazilian soccer. My condolences oh, man. to you and the team. Um, I, but I like him. I like Lionel, uh, Lionel Messi. I like him. So <laughs> I deserve it. It's deserve it. He's the best <laughs> in the world now. <laughs> <laughs> many many Brazilians would kill you for that. But I know that is, that is fine. They they cannot get to you. We have protective custody for you. Uh, <laughs> another great shot. Oh, the, I was modeling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this wow. one with if uh, with my mother. Yep. Uh, just a, a a cup of I think it's one year before she uh, she she died. Yeah, this me my brother. And my my little sister, yeah, she and she had uh, two years old when my mother died. Oh my gosh! And you remain close to your brother and sister now? Yes, yes, I'm That's I'm closer great. to to all of them, all of them. Yeah, uh, I I can only imagine you go through that kind of loss when you are young. It brings you even closer together than normal loving conditions. And now we make a jump to a more grown-up Thiago. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yes. Please tell us about this photo. Oh, it was my, my university prom. Oh. Uh, I was 26. Very handsome. Now, you know, my hair, you know. Ah, uh, no, very good-looking guy. Thin, you know, now I'm so... But it, it was in 2001. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. I mean, we look at this photo here of you, movie star handsome, and now totally burned out and ugly looking, and uh, there is no comparison. Is is kind of tragic in a way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, now. Me my, yeah, me and you, my wife. Yes. Please tell us a little how you met. Yeah, uh, my father, uh, my my father-in-law. Uh, yeah. He was a, a teacher of my father in, in uh, Air Force Academy. Uh -huh. And uh, my father and my, my mother-in-law, they know me since I was a baby. Oh, they, I love they, it. They, they carry me on. <laughs> oh. And my brother. And that place we are there, we call the Vampire Vi uh, uh, Village because of mosquitoes. Oh. And uh, I, live, I live in the first, in the first floor. And my wife leave it in the second floor. No. Yes. In and nine and you, Oh, for gosh sakes. And we met to, and we, this, when we, we, we met again, we, we spent 
years uh, separate and then we met again in this in this place because it was uh this place we had to live there for a year why our father was making a uh, uh, air force uh, uh course uh -huh. and we have to live there and we met there and my my wife was well she's seven years uh, uh i'm i'm seven years older than than she yeah and uh that time back the time oh sure. she's we we can she cannot play with us she's so little <laughs> <you know. laughs> and then we met again in brasilia 15 years after 1919 mm. 2005 wow. we met here in brasilia and then start to date and some some in in one of our travel we come back to rio and we went there to the to vampire vi a village uh and and my my son was there as well he was two years uh -huh. old and uh -huh. uh very good 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 memories there yeah i i must say every every photo of you and your family you know you talk about uh, brazilian people um showing happiness more um it your family just glows and one can sense that you are in a marriage that is a very happy marriage. Uh, I assume this picture was taken sometime after you were married. <laughs> no, 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 no. We 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 were living together, huh. but we're not married. Uh -huh. uh, and then was the uh, our first son, Luis Guilherme. Wonderful. Uh, and uh, well, she was pregnant, and we married. Uh, civil marriage yeah. on February 18. And our son <laughs> was born in February 19. Oh. <laughs> he, he, he was uh, he was born uh, eight months. Uh, we were still looking for, that's the day we met. And the day after, uh. he was born. <laughs> uh. Uh. Wow. He, he, he came, uh, a month earlier than the, the, the expected. Uh, and here he him. is. That's him, yeah, that's him. And what is your son's name? Luis Guilherme. Ah, good name. That's him with, uh, I think it's one year old. We make this, this picture. Wonderful and photo. Yeah, we make a book. We call here a book of photos. And uh, when he was one year old, very small, very small. I don't know why they grew up. <laughs> <laughs> well, again you are an insanely photogenic family they're so cute when they when they are babies no they no give me a kiss no then why no 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 why kiss i and he gave me his head i don't want your head i want i want to kiss you in a shit okay. i'm sure this is something that is just in brazilian culture no american parent can relate to what you are saying <laughs> <laughs> and your brother yes my brother Diego uh -huh. he was a uh, is a uh, Luis Guilherme birthday I think it was uh two years old birthday and wow. he was here when we are living now this house uh it was my my father and mother-in-law house uh -huh. and now we are living here after they pass away we got uh -huh. this house yeah and uh we made this 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 uh anniversary for him his birthday Wonderful. I see you are in a shark infested area. I love sharks. I love UFOs. I love dinos and I love sharks. <laughs> the, the three and mysteries are okay. UFO and mysteries are the, are the same. Ah. But I love the sharks and the in the in the love dinosaurs. You and me both. I um you know you have visited New York and we have yeah. one of the most wonderful museums in the world, the Museum of Natural History, which is where as a boy. I went there. I was introduced to the world of sea creatures before I actually experienced them. And is, uh, well, you know, it sets your imagination on fire. Yeah, this was Marcella. Oh. My, Marcella's when she was uh, was born, my daughter. That, that is my mother's name. Marcella, yeah, it's a good name. It's a very good name, how it's lovely. Yes, it's because of my, uh, well, Luis Glems, because my name is Thiago Luis. My brother is Diego Luis. My father was Luis Guilherme. My father was Luis Mauro. 
and mm -hmm. uh marcella is because of my my father-in-law who is who was a marcello and uh, okay. she was marcella beautiful and oh they both. <laughs> man he was <laughs> he, he was five years old when he got her <laughs> kids don't get any more cute no <laughs> Halloween, we have Halloween here. <laughs> uh, that must be a very special part of being a parent. They love, dress. they love Halloween. They love Halloween. Always uh, has me. Let's let's do Halloween, and we we are uh, are we trying here, and and yeah. we're we live in in Kandam, that relief, yeah, uh, to make a Halloween party because a lot of houses like it too so the people get custom and they go to the house to get trick uh, trick and uh, trick and right, trick, trick and treat. yeah yes <laughs> trick and well, treat. Uh, if i had a daughter i would hope that she would dress like that all year long but <laughs> it is, it's a wonderful halloween outfit for a kid that's beautiful okay oh again playing playing soccer it was in a in a university we had a team there, ah. and it was my my friends. I I don't see any one of them a long time ago. Uh, yeah, it's very 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 sad. Well, this was uh, here in Brasilia. It was wow. a Confederations Cup before that preceded the World Cup that we had here in 2014. That yeah. it, it was in 2013, and Brazil against Japan, we won three 0 Oh oh boy. Uh, again, as in in many countries other than uh, America, soccer is the biggest passionate sport imaginable, uh, eclipsing all the other sports together. Yes, yes. In Brazil, you know, uh, uh, all, all all of the boys born with, with a ball in in their feet. <laughs> many, 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 and <laughs> never get the chance to be a, a professional, yeah. but love anyway. I expect many girls now too. Yes, Marcela's a love love sucker. Oh, wonderful! Is actually, um, I am not somebody who has followed sports since I was a kid, but my best friend um, was one of our school soccer stars, and then went on to become a soccer coach, as well as have his business career. And it is always a sport that I have had more feeling for. Uh, understand the passion for on a, a deeper level and this is when you got out of prison no <laughs> i cut my hair because we we knew that uh, my mother-in-law got cancer cancer oh good and for you. She, she had to make the the chemo uh chemotherapy yeah. yeah and i i you know rip it off well ignore, off my, all my, hair. <laughs> ignore my stupid joke um, no bravo. Problem. It's a beautiful way to support <laughs> the people that we love visually. And you look good with a close haircut. I, I like it too. I like it too. But they're not, they're not, you know, I don't think I'm going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> now, for people who um, are not familiar uh, with Rio, the Christ is a, a, a hugely important landmark and dominates the city it really it looks down on it um incredibly dramatic so it was quite a hike for you guys to get up there yes very high we have to take a, a little train <clears throat> and then sta stairs and we have this beautiful view of the the city of the rio de janeiro and christ you know open arms mm. re receiving and then blessing everybody yeah. that's there it is beautiful um, as we proceed on, um, our viewers will get a better sense uh, that you are passionate travelers. And uh, my best sense is how much you enjoy not just getting out there in the world, but doing it with your family. Very special, very special, Thiago. I'm trying to convince them to be to go with me to Roswell. Oh, wonderful. this is kind of hard. This is kind of hard, but I'm trying to. Well, this this my friends at uh, at the college. Yeah. Uh, before we get in the university. Yeah. The, with this one, I have a, a a lot of contact with them. Oh, We're great. Connected. One, I think. Well, uh, one, two, three, four of them are living in, in United States. 
Oh. Four of them are living in the United States now, but we're still using WhatsApp and, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, phone calls to get yeah. in touch. This one was the first time I saw and I touch snow because oh. Brazil, there's Where no snow. You? In London, I was in London. In, How in, in, not in London, in England. It was in yeah. Adelstone, Adelstone, where That's I live it. <laughs> and I was so happy, so happy that I, I asked, "Take a picture." I this is the 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 milk deliver the milkman, the man the, who delivers the milk, <laughs> and uh, come here, come here, let's take a picture. <laughs> Sent to Brazil. It was 90, <laughs> 90, 93, 93, well, 94. <laughs> whenever it is possible for you and your family to visit me, you can be excited and happy about seven months of the year because we will have snow for you. I love snow. <laughs> I love and snow. Uh, this is your office. Um, the no, uh, well, it's my office. I borrow to to some some people that go to White House. You know, uh, very uh, nice of them to loan you the desk. I love, I love this, this one. I love this one. This the <laughs> both of them. They 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 are great. They're great <laughs> person. Uh, my, my 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 Paul. My 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 pal. My my Paul. Yeah. Uh, Obama and and. Uh, they were. Uh, I'm there. I'm asking a pizza. We are having a dinner. I was asking asking a pizza, and uh, what a great time! Great time we were there. <laughs> and another American institution. Oh, I love it. I, if I could, I would go to Disney four times a year because I love it. I love wow. Disneyland. The fantasy. You know, when you go to Disney, you you unplug. All the problems yeah. because it's a it's a perfect place. I love it. It was the first time I went to to Disney World. I was uh, thirty. Uh, I was thirty three. Yes, I was thirty three. And uh, my wife had gone some several times before, but was my first time and my mother in law first time to in in oh, Disney boy. World. And I love it. I love it. It's a a beautiful place. Amazing. And now we go to my hometown. Uh, I, I I could live in New York easily. Yeah. I love this kind. I live this. I love the city. You can do. Uh, you can dress as you want. You can walk as you want, and uh, nobody cares because well, it's it's like Brazil. We have a lot of people from different parts of the world yeah. live in New York. Yeah. And uh, I had a dream to meet uh, the the Statue of Liberty. Uh, and I thought it was bigger, but it's not bigger. It's, yes. it's not that bigger. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. I am one of the few people I know that has visited there probably 25 times, uh, starting when I was very young and many of those times working as a tour guide. But nothing really prepares you for the size or the grace of this statue, how truly remarkably beautiful it is. And we're going to move through um, these pictures now at a more lively pace so that we um, are in a good spot when we come to our break. Here we are in Strawberry Fields in Central Park, the John Lennon Memorial, very special. Yes, it's an amazing place in Central Park. It's beautiful. It's it beautiful. is beautiful. Beautiful. It, it, it is one of the great parks in the world for sure. Yeah. Eight, 844 acres. And I know a lot of the parks. I know Brazil has hey. a lot of great parks and, and New York. Have a, and I, I've been in the Hyder Park in, in London. Yeah. So I know I know parks. And, well done. and Central Park is amazing. It is. Wow. Ah. Classical. Classic. It is. <laughs> this is classic. <laughs> this is classic. <laughs> in the middle of it all. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It was in the morning. It was in the morning. And we we having a breakfast. Perfect and, uh, place for a nice relaxed breakfast. Yes, New York is an amazing place. Is. I love it. I love New York. Oh, my ah, dinos. Here we are. Natural Museum. Yep. I love it. I love it. Natural Museum. And uh, I, I I went to to Natural Museum in New York and in Los Angeles. Yeah. And so they're for they're children great. like me who grew up in and around the city, this was the first museum of your life. And uh, we all fall in love with it when we are very young. 
Um, my grandparents take me first and then go back on school trips. And I am still a regular visitor when I'm in the city. And here you are in a, another iconic location. Yeah, the Empire State. Yep. You mm. can see the, the, the city. You can see the, uh, the, the, the grandiosity of the, the city. It's a, yeah. it's a, a city that, that's true, never sleeps, never sleeps. You it's can true. do everything you want 24 hours a day. Yeah. And you can see that the, uh, there's no noise up there. Yeah. So you true. can see the city like calm and beautiful. You can see all the details of the city. And on a clear day or clear night, you can actually see 30 miles in any direction from there. Whoa. Aha. Uh -huh. It was in 2012 when I uh, came for the second time to Disney World and first time of my boy, of Luis Guilherme. And they love it, Pooh and Tiger. They love it. And when, when they met them, they, he asked, they are true. They're really, yes, of course they are. They are, <laughs> look, look at the poo. This one was in Chile, uh -huh. in San Cristobal uh, Mountain in Chile. It was in 2016, 2006. Oh and this was 2013 in New Mexico City. That was uh -huh. the Tehuacan. Yeah, one of the most famous step pyramids in the world, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, Incan or Mayan? It's a uh, Zastek. I think ah, it's Zastek. Zastek. And uh, was one of my dreams to be there. Well, here's a location that is one of my dreams. Besides that one. Oh, Machu Picchu. Machu Incredible. Picchu. Yeah, we went there in 2015. If I'm not wrong, 15. And uh, mm. I made I made the the. Inca, uh, uh, the the Inca Trail. Uh, yeah. We made it. We had you. You have two options: the four days mm. where you 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 sleep in the Inca Trail, mm -hmm. and you have the two days. One day stepping, step that those wow. huge steps, and uh, begin five in the morning and eight in a, in a, in a eight o'clock at night. Extraordinary. It's so it's i could not walk but the next yeah. day we had to go there again <laughs> to go to to do much picture yeah. but it's, it's amazing it's a it's a travel that we never forget and i yeah. hope to do it again yeah and a very distinctive uh, background <clears throat> here is the seven color mountains out uh, in peru as well mm. uh <laughs> it's um, almost six uh Thousand meters. Yeah, six you thousand go, meters. Yes, wow. six thousand six point yes. zero zero zero. Yeah, and uh, you go by by a, a little bus, a mm. micro bus, and you have to walk. You have to walk four hundred meters to mm. get to this place, Beautiful. but it's so high. The 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 you have no air to breathe. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I took. We took to Oxygen. get there. We we took almost two hours to walk four hundred meters. Oh my gosh! We we walk five steps, stop, breathe. More five steps, stop. But the kids there who live there, they walk, they run upside <laughs> down. Yeah, it's amazing. The best lungs imaginable. Yes, yes. I almost said this one of the photos in the in the Inca Trail. <laughs> Oh, this is Nazca. Oh. We, this is Nazca. You, you can see the astronaut there, the astronaut over there in one wow. of the mountains. He was in the, you know, little, yeah. you know, left. And uh, we took a, a, a bus in in Machu Picchu, five mm. in the morning. No, in, in, in Cusco, five in the morning. Travel seven hours to get to Nazca and then get on a plane make a 30 minutes flight to see all the, the 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 drones yeah and then more seven hours to come back to cusco mind-blowing yeah and well this is an example of something that many people feel must be done with assistance 
of non-human beings. For me, not so much. Uh, there are ways, and what the ma the mind of a human being can conceive, it can achieve. But of course, we're talking here about stones that weigh tons and are so perfectly cut that yeah. you cannot put a piece of paper. I try it. Them. Yeah, I try it. I try it. This was a such woman. Amazing. Mm. And uh, it's amazing. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, I do believe that human did that, mm. but they had a, some kind of technology. Yeah, <laughs> amazing because the cuts were so perfect. Exactly. You know, you, you cannot put a paper between the rocks. Yeah, everything very, is engineered very, like laser. Uh, or melting. They 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 talk about melting rocks. They uh, they they melt the rocks and the. Make the shape, Incredible. and and leave to to get hard again. Okay. But it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's a magical place. Three <laughs> D printer of the past. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Wow, this is in, in, in <laughs> this is in Mont Blanc, in Genève. Oh. It's not in Genève, it's in Mont Blanc, in France. But yeah. uh, I was in in Genève to I I allow. Uh, international conference ah. is it was in 2017 and uh it's a beautiful place it's a beautiful place wow it, it was in an ilt oh. uh meeting in 2017 as well well this it's a beautiful uh, photo we took 2018 before yeah 18 mm. we we made a cruise uh, departing in, in Rio de Janeiro and goes to Uruguay, Argentina, and then come back to Rio. And uh, I took this photo of my my uh, my boy and my my daughter. Well, <laughs> my boy is a as a orange belt in yeah. judo, and my my daughter is a gray belt in judo as well. Bravo! Wonderful. Well, <laughs> my grand my grandkids. Luke and Leia. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, they're great. Two Yorkshires. <laughs> We're coming into uh, almost our last five minutes before the break. So, again, I want to leave the second half of the show uh, to talk about UFOs, actually. Um, I, I know it's a change of pace. This is obviously Christmas I Can yes. Do. Yes. Yes. And one of my favorite photos of your two kids. I love this picture. Yeah, in, in a in a tr in a trip we we made to Rio Grande do Norte, Natal. Yeah. Wow. This is in Los Angeles. Yeah. The County Museum of Natural History in Los Angeles. It's an amazing place as well. There's a lot of dinos. Yeah. So I was very happy to be there. Disneyland. So I know <laughs> Disney World and no Disneyland. <laughs> amazing, amazing. And my vaccine, yes, that I got it uh, on July twenty third. So we here in Brazil, I think we accelerate the the vaccination, and uh, I think we're gonna for God bless us in October. I think almost the Brazil had the the shot. Oh, good. Well, okay. Some of my <laughs> uh, my friend that I. I had in the UFO Congress, Neil Foss in, in Foz de Iguaçu, yes. JJ Hurtak, I think it's 2015. Yeah, and um, this is a good point, a good time for me to ask you, because I have not yet, how did you become interested in the subject of UFOs? Uh, I, I always said that I was born with that. I think I was born of that because my father mm. liked it. Ah, <laughs> I don't know if it's the DNA. <laughs> I don't know, but he liked it. Let me cut you off for a moment and ask you: as a military pilot, did he ever mention anything to you about the subject, his interest in the subject, any awareness of it, or did that not come up in your conversations? No, he he told me that he liked it. Uh, he had a uh, he had the book. Uh, Chariots of Gods, that's like von Däniken. Right, that's it. And he gave to me, and uh, he bought me magazines, UFO magazines, and books uh, about that. Uh, he never told me that uh, he saw something. But uh, oh. some years ago, some years ago, one of his friends 
and uh, uh, military academy, Air Force Academy. Mm. He uh, wrote to me uh, an email. He told me, well, in 1967, we were in, on, uh, on a lunch time at academy and more than 200 cadets saw a UFO over the base. My father never told me that. Wow. He never told me. And my father-in-law, he saw a, a UFO when he was pilot, a, a Chavante as well. And he saw, he was in, in a cockpit of the, the plane. It was at night and he saw a, a, a light coming in his di direction. Mm. And uh, the light came across him and his side and then pass him again and cross him again uh, to the back and disappear. He never told me, he never, yeah. he never told me that he was a extraterrestrial airship. He always said it's something that I never saw again. How ironic and a perfect moment for us to go to break. Uh, this is Peter Robbins with my special guest coming to us from Brasilia tonight. Uh, Thiago Luis Cicchetti, ufologist extraordinaire. You are watching uh, Meanwhile Here on Earth on KGRA Digital Broadcasting, and we will be back shortly. Hey members, the new KGRA DB app is now available on iOS and Android devices. Gain on demand access to any KGRA DB programming. Download any show directly to your mobile device to listen or watch on the go. Go to the App Store and search KGRA DB. Welcome to the new KGRA digital broadcasting website, the KGRADB.com. Here you'll find great new content, including the KGRA Classics, great shows from our archives. You'll be able to see the showtimes and information so you can see what show is currently on air. The On Air Live button. So just go to this section and you'll be able to hear the show live with exceptional sound quality. We also have the Vault section. Make sure to subscribe to get access to great content and special features. We have the make content for our latest news and events, so make sure to sign up and you can be part of our forum. So make sure to check out the new KGRA digital broadcasting website, the KGRADB.com. We look forward to seeing you there and we hope that you enjoy the new website. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. And welcome back to Meanwhile Here on Earth with my special guest, Thiago Luis Cicchetti. And uh, when we um, departed three short minutes ago, we were just beginning to get into um, the ufology aspect of this story. Again, um, Thiago, thanks so much for giving us a sense of um, your life and how you have become the person you have become. You are now the author of 13 books. You, your work ethic 
considering that you have a family to raise and you have a career, a job to pay the bills, um, how have you managed to produce this many books that are this highly regarded in a relatively short period of time for most authors? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I always say that if you want to do something, you have to find your time. So yeah. I, I, I write in a, in a some, sometimes in weekend. I, when I, uh, I try to, to write a book, I make uh, some shuttle, uh, not shuttle, I made some appointments that, well, today I'm going to write for one hour, two hours. And I, I make all the script, I make a, a script that, well, you have to research from there to, to there. And then and now you have to, to start to write. And I, I know uh, when, when, it, when it start to, to type, to write, I think I go, I go very fast. Uh, because I, I have a lot of things in my memory. Of course, I have uh, a lot of books and I have many of sources, but I have a lot of things in my mind. So I start to type it and I cannot stop. <laughs> Let's talk about some of your books before we go on to uh, some of the personalities that you have um, uh, connected with, dealt with in the world of UFO studies, and then spend some time talking about important cases in Brazilian and South and Central American uh, ufology. Um, I don't have um, graphics for every one of your books, but as we move through here, um, give us an idea of, of what each of these books is about and the translation of the title. Yes, uh, this universe, in solitude universe, is two books when uh, I, I wrote I put all the, the the articles that I got published. This one and, and one two uh, that was published by by UFO magazine, Revista UFO magazine, and UFO Matrix and the UFO Truth, and some of my articles that never were published. Ah. So it's a kind of, uh, it's a kind of a, a compendium of uh, articles about what uh, I wrote about UFO phenomena in magazines. Great. And uh, the UFO files, there are three volumes. Uh, there are cases around the world in Brazil that uh, was very a little known here in Brazil. So I, I, I dig in, interesting cases uh, in a ufology community, ufology history translate to Portuguese and put in this three volume uh, collection. And I think the people like it because it's very short and uh, give the, the, the people, you know, a basis what uh, ufology is. So I like it. I like this, this books very much. The um, uh, for quick follow up question, which is, do some of your books appeal more to um, people like me and our professional colleagues and other ones more to um, just the public at large who want a, a bigger picture or are looking for a different kind of book or to, you know, a one-on-one to begin to educate themselves. Do you find that your audience covers both, you know, scholarly serious people, serious students of the subject and people who are just getting into it? Yeah, these three volumes is the basic. Uh, if you read these three three books, of uh, you can see what's going on in ufology. You have to have a basis, and I have books that saw it so, uh, as well. Uh, uh, people can read it, but I go a little deeper in mm. some subjects like UFO typology, extraterrestrial typology, UFO crashes. Got and it. they they are you know they're focus focus it in 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 a matter in a subject of ufology this is the, the third the third volume and this is the ufo uh extraterrestrial 
typology guide. This one I have here as well. No, I don't. Very powerful cover. It has the third edition. Oh. When uh, when I made a, a, a research with more than two thousand cases. Wow. And uh, I split in four big uh, in four big uh, groups: animals, humans, uh, exoticus, and roboticus. So I describe I, I read the, descri the description of the, sure. the, the the being and start to put him in this for one of these four big groups. Yeah. This ah. is my, my, my first book, this one here. I, I, this one I have here in English. Oh man. It's a big book. It is. It's a big it book. <laughs> it's Did more. Yeah. Please. It's more than in, uh, 500 pages, more than 300 photos and illustrations. Wow. And it covers the great part of UFO cases in Brazil since pre-1930 to 2015. Good Lord. So there's the most amazing cases in Brazil are in this book. Is the This book is in English, of course, to people know what happened in Brazil. This is, um, I, I knew about this book, of course, from the time you published it. I am... Um, Regret that I have not read it yet, but I did not realize it was so extensive. Um, this would be the book for any of our viewers who want the perfect introduction to the history of UFO across the board, I'm guessing, in Brazilian culture. Uh, and this can be gotten on Amazon? Yes, we have it uh, on Amazon.com. Just find the UFO context in Brazil or Chago Lichichetti, you're going to find it. Great. Great. Uh, outstanding. Um, and another very powerful graphic for sure. Um, and, oh boy. Je n'ai pas parlé français, uh, but <laughs> this book is, is the, the, the French edition of the UFO context in Brazil. Mm. Outstanding. And uh, for the, the public who speak in French, it's a very good book to me as well. That's great. Uh, more than 400 pages and images and photos. And it's, it's, it's going very well in Europe. Now, um, how old are your children now? Luis Guilherme has 12 and Marcela is nearly seven. They are growing up with um, an author, uh, a well-known personality in Brazil, and with um, the subject of OVNIs, UFOs, being part of the way they're growing up. Um, I, I expect that some of you know the big television shows that are famous in America, of course, travel around the world, but one in particular that brings together one of the most highly visible personalities in the history of UFOs in the media, and one of the most influential ones in terms of the man, not a man, but the man, the author that first captured your interest on the subject. Here they are with your son. Yes. yes. <laughs> I love this story. <laughs> uh, we had a, a summit. Uh, UFO summit here in, in Brazil in 2018, and George Sokalos and Eric von Denken came here to <laughs> to make a speech, and it was I, I was a, a, a speaker as well, mm. and uh, my 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 son always want to to know the the fabulous. Oh, you've frozen on They're us. Amazing. Uh, just repeat that last part because your image froze for a moment. Oh, uh, my my son asked me, I want to meet that uh, very strange hair man. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it was the first time that my son uh, went to a, a speech, a, a congress oh, with me. Cool. And they love it. And George was very, very gentle with, with my boy. Yeah. And, uh, do you speak in English? And I said, yes, I do. Well, let's uh, uh, practice your English and maybe, maybe you can make some research with me. 
Oh. When we grow up. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, that's great to hear. I like it. I like it very much. Well, Richard Dolan, it was in yeah. 2013, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I love, yeah. I love Richard. He's yeah. a very, very amazing, intelligent guy. Yeah. And I, ha I think I have all his books. I like it very, very much. Yeah. He is one of our certainly. Uh, he was very writer. hairy. I, I don't know if he's hairy as well. I, I think he's cut his hair. <laughs> He has. It is definitely shorter now than it is in that picture. And well, one of our is, favorite people. This is the man. One of the men. Stanton Friedman. Yeah. Uh, I met him in 2014. I, I share with him two or three more congress here in Brazil. Uh, in the, If he sit with him to lunch and wow. start to ask him about the roles or about something... He never, never was upset. He yeah. stopped to each and oh, let's talk. Yep. And he talked. Right. He talked. He was a very, very good man. Very good. And now he knows uh, what you're looking for. Now he knows the the yeah. secret. Now he knows the secret. Yeah, yeah. We miss him very much. A great man and a great guy. Yeah. And another great guy. Yeah, Don Schmidt. Always ask me, come to Rosa, let's dig something. What, what are we gonna dig? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Let's <laughs> dig something in Rosa dessert. But okay, <laughs> let's go. And uh, I'm try. I'm planning to go to Rosa. Well, and, I am uh, keeping my fingers crossed that um, I will also be there. Uh, so let's do maybe, it. Yeah, maybe we see each other there next year, which will be massive for the 75th anniversary. Yes, you, you would be great. Well, Nick oh, Hedford. Two Englishmen? Nick, yeah, Nick and Harry. Uh, Gary Hessentine. Uh, Gary is a very good friend, the, the, the editor of the UFO, uh, the UFO Truth magazine. And, uh, and uh, Nick Hedford, I have many of his books. I love it. I love he it. Has so. He has written many books. In fact, he is one of our truly most prolific UFO and paranormal authors. Every week, know. every week has a new book. I cannot buy a, a, all of them. It's too <laughs> fast. David Children's mm. amazing guy as well. I love him as well. And he, he was like he's like a tomato because you know that because in Foz do Iguaçu uh, it's hot because uh, the, the the Congress was in in November. I, I think it was in October, November, in almost summer or summer in Brazil. It's oh, very gosh. hot. It's very hot, and uh, I think <laughs> David went to to uh, uh, the falls. Oh no, uh, falls. So he got the sun. He got the sun, of course, and he's like a tomato. Oh, well, you have. We see pictures here with you and many distinguished personalities, but I'm sorry to say. You will take a picture with anybody. I mean, you have no taste at all. This is the best man I ever met in UFO Congress. <laughs> <laughs> we mm. took this in 2013, isn't it? Yeah. 14, 13, no, yeah. 14, 14, 14. How the time flies. Yeah, um, it, it yeah. was the first edition of my book, yeah. UFO Typology, uh, Extraterrestrial oh. Typology. Right. This one I gave to you. I hope you had in your library. Oh, yes. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what we're going to do now is go from the books and the personalities to start to talk about cases. And you sent me synopses of a number of well-known Brazilian cases. Some I was familiar with. Some not only was I not familiar with, but they made my jaw drop. Um, again, in America, when I first was getting into this work many years ago, I am educating myself as I go, and um, you have to use your common sense, your critical thinking, uh, your deductive reasoning to decide on certain basic things that you're learning or think you're learning, whether they are accurate or not. And one of the things that was generally put forward in American ufology was, you know, we get these reports of cases from Mexico and South America and the countries in Central America, they are wild. They are so lurid. They are so dramatic with the beings and the landings and the taking and the interactions. But you know, 
these people, um, they are rather mystical. Many of them grow up in the Catholic tradition without a lot of education. They have all the folklore. And, you know, you take what they say with just a little bit of humor because they are not as sophisticated. I mean, very condescending and very um, insulting, a way of kind of explaining away what overwhelms us, even if we are involved in the work. And as I started to educate myself more over the years, um, I see it's true. It's true that there are a greater history of contact cases, multiply witnessed several, uh, in many cases, of landing cases, of historic interactions with indigenous people, and on and on, um, that we don't see quite the same up here. Is that a fair appraisal? I, I, it's a generalization for sure, but there is a history that you have helped to record and make available wider and wider that should be of tremendous interest to anybody interested in the subject in America who wants to begin to get a vantage point of it in another culture, again, where the subject is regarded generally more seriously than it is here or, you know, has been till recent years. Yeah, uh, the Brazil, the South America, Central America, we have cases that just happen here in this area. And uh, I know it. I know it because when when I start to when I start to when I start to to write my books, uh, I try sort. I try to find sources that I can use to write the book. But uh, and I never found. In I have more, uh, Peter. I have more than six hundred and fifteen books here in my, on my lib, lib library, and uh, so uh, just a few books talks about cases in Brazil or Argentina, Chile, mm. Central America. Uh, I don't know if the the other the other uh, count countries uh, or United States or Europe think that we are savage, that we are living in trees, in a jungle, living with monkeys. I I, I know because in, in, when I live in, in, in England, they asked me if we had television. <gasps> I said, we, we not only have television because we also have airplanes. <laughs> okay, I came by airplane. <laughs> and uh, uh, and I, I tried write, writing that book, You've a Contact in Brazil, uh, to show that we have much more than that you know. Yeah. I know that Corin Lorizin uh, wrote uh, many books, and in their books had very good cases of Brazil. Yeah. But th these cases are from 40, 50, 60s, 17, 80, 90s, 2000. I never see nothing, and and uh, in the United States books or or, or in English books yeah. about the uh, and a lot of things happen in Brazil, in South America, in Central America. God we knows. have very good cases documented uh, yeah. uh, by, for example, Air Force Brazilian Air Force, the night uh, the official night of UFOs, a night a noite oficial dos ovnis in Portuguese where more than 21 UFOs from different sizes, since 10 meters diameter to more than 200 long. So, uh, uh, and this happened in, in 1986, and five Brazilian jet fighters were uh, scrambled to, to intercept this object, but never got it. Yeah. Because the objects were much more faster, intelligent, and and made maneuvers that was impossible. So we have a lot of these cases, <laughs> important cases, and never got to you. Yeah, that's a good um, a good segue to start to go to some of the images that you've sent. 
And uh, again, um, I've had a chance now to read through some of the case material that you sent. And we have um, a pretty good amount of time to start for you to give us an introduction. So we begin with Captain Jordão. Jordão, Captain Captain Jordão. He was uh, one of the, the the pilots that was sent to intercept this UFOs in the night official night of UFOs. It happened in in May 19 uh, 1986 when uh, count uh, uh, the, the, the tower, the, the people on the, on the control tower, they saw and start to detect on a radar many, many plots on a radar. Mm. And these plots were moving too fast. When a, a, a airplane are in the, in the radar, when they move, they leave a little tail on the, on the radar screen. And these plots just jump it from one point to another point, hmm. jump it. So never uh, uh, was the, the, the speed was impossible. Even nowadays was impossible. They were traveling more than twenty thousand kilometers per hour to make a point, and they were appearing in, in very uh, in several states, cities, and three states of Brazil: Minas Gerais, Brasilia. Uh, São Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. Four. Brazil is not a state; uh, is a is a federal capital, so it's not yeah. state. And the uh, people in the ground in a tower, and the pilots and Captain Jornão was of one of them saw the UFOs. Captain Jornão were uh, were in the, in the air when he got six UFOs in his right side and seven in his left side. Several. Uh, sizes, and he could not, never, never, they never trying to uh, shut them down, never, never, because <laughs> they were so amazing with that, well, they, they was playing uh, cat and mice, cat and mouse, yeah, uh, yeah. playing with the, the Brazilian air, airplanes, and it was uh, Chavante, it was not Chavante, it was uh, Mirage and F5, they're supersonic airplanes. So they never got the UFO. The UFO was playing with them. Um, is this um, uh, from the same case, this lieutenant? Yes, Lieutenant okay. Kleber Marinho. He, uh, he, he saw the UFOs, uh, three UFOs in front of him, but the radar uh, didn't catch it. To the radar, well, they are not here. Well, they are here. They are in front of me, the three of them in front of me. And they, they, they uh, 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 use the turbo uh, of, the, of the airplane. Mm. And when he was almost getting the UFOs, they spit away. Just plain, just like plain with that. Well, this, uh, this event took almost six, seven hours until the morning of uh, uh, May 20 in 1986 mm. and uh, after that the, all the press knew what what's going on and uh, the the chief of of Brazilian Air Force made a, a press conference and said put all the pilots there there were five pilots in them for the first time well what we chased was uh, some kind of in intelligent uh, type of airplane or control it, controlled by some kind of uh, intelligence that this is not from this. Is Earth. this the same case? No, this is another case. Okay. So uh, we just got in and he promised, well, we will uh, we'll publish a, a, a report about this case. We have already okay. the audios, uh, of the the, the, the pilots and the, the control, yeah. we have the the audios is already uh, released, but only in two thousand and eleven or twelve, after thirty years, almost thirty years, they released the report. 
and in the report they concluded that what was that was intelligent and it was not made in this planet uh -huh. so we have the, a, a great evidence and we're still looking for because some says that one at least one of their planes had a camera and he filmed the ufos uh -huh. so we're still looking for to to find this the film oh. and uh, and to to release this film to the society of we're course. still looking for even with a more um, open-minded government still things are kept uh, yeah. repressed is the nature of the military intelligence or, community or kept or lost okay yeah. or also, lost because also. we don't we don't have this kind of uh, uh, careful to the things yeah. to these things i know that that's good to hear so we move on to this next intriguing case which begins with this image yes it's a, it's a navigant uh, beach in santa catarina state where in 1974 a ufo crashed on the ocean and uh the brazilian navy arrived and isolated the area and uh, divers, divers uh, dive it to to try try to rescue. Before that, sailors, fishermen uh, thought they thought that thought that it was an airplane. So they, when this thing crashing on the sea, it's very very similar to Shag Harbor incident. Uh, they went to the to the, to the to the sea and trying to find some kind of wreckage. Or survivors they never found and then wow. the navy arrived and this lady area mm. and asked for one of the the fishermen well you stay awake all the night to see something emerge mm. and well the fishermen stayed there wow and this was the shape of their the their craft and uh well uh he he wake it he stayed awake the whole night but uh in the morning when the navy arrived again oh nothing nothing nothing, nothing has happened i just uh saw some some ships navy ships came and some some divers dive it and uh and uh nothing happened no okay okay okay, okay. later on uh, uh carlos machado is a brazilian ufologist who uh research this case they know that brazilian navy found the shape the the the, the ship got it put in, in a underwater they, they put some some chains up like it and wow drag the the their shape to another place and then what, what happened we don't know but it was one of the brazilian ufo crashes that happened here boy This image, I think, a little, a uh, few more, are about the the plate operation, Operação Prato. This is a real photos, real photos, photos uh, made by a military team mm. that was sent to Colares, is a city in Pará State, and uh, Bahia do Sol uh, is a city as well because. This is the famous Chupa Chupa case, suck suck, because these lights, these ships, uh, shoot some kind of uh, uh, array or or laser, yeah, in people and suck their energy. Whoa! Because because why I I'm, I'm saying energy because after that, the people got anemia. So they took the blood of these people, and these people, uh, uh, well, this is a, a, a suck suck machine, so it became a chupa chupa, and in many cities of Pará State and, and Maranhão State, many people are leaving the town. The towns, many towns, became a ghost towns. Oh my! Because the people are so scared, and they le left. The, the the towns or many of them uh, uh lock the doors the windows but even there 
even that the ufos or the slides was uh, they stood hovering uh, over the, the 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 houses and shoot the ray and the ray uh, crossed uh, uh through the 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 the, the walls or the sure. windows the and got yeah the ceiling and and struck the people uh. and we had a many cases one person off officially one one person uh was dead because of anemia because after oh he my. got the the ray the laser of this uh this ship or something whatever and uh, the mayors of many many mayors of the city these cities asking to the Brazilian Air Force well had to have to send someone there because it is in the air is in air is an airplane is airplane is, is concerned about you and they send the, this military team to there and uh, they took more than 200 photos films and almost got in, in touch almost got in touch with one of the entities and for some reason we don't know why uh when they almost get this that where we are closing to get in touch the chief said well this operation is closed we don't go there anymore we never know that years later we knew that this occurrences these cases uh was still going on they they started in oh 1977 and ended the sightings, these attacks ended in 80, 1982. Good and Lord. we knew, and we knew that after the Brazilian closed this operation, uh, the North Americans came and start their own operation there to try to find what was there. So Thiago, um, this case, when it was happening, was, it, information was repressed or it was being reported in the newspapers and in the media yes spread all the newspapers and media in the north of brazil in 1977 well this this news never uh, uh get to the 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 big biggest city, cities of brazil like sao paulo rio janeiro okay. brasilia but in the north of 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 the brazil Every know everybody knows about that, uh, got and it. was photos by journalists and photographers, sure. by militaries and uh, films. We still looking for as well films because we know that we saw it, but the the Brazilian Air Force never uh, released these films. Yeah, this image is this part of that. Yeah, it's okay. One, this is also. Yes. You can okay. see this is, is like a, a rounded ob object. It's a blue one. Yes. And uh, the people who took the, the the military team who took these photos, they were very uh, specialists on 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 mm. you know any kind of aero aero object. Oh sure, sure. And do we move on? Is this a, a new case now? No, it's the same. But this mm -hmm. is as a, a frame of one of the videos gosh well if you have a frame you have the video yeah. where is the video we're still looking for <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the, the type of the ufo that was uh in 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 that in that in that date you can see uh the people call it uh, uh stingray because the tail have three tails hmm. we have uh this dorsal uh in in the, in the left yeah the fins yes yeah. the the things in the left in the in the sides mm. and this light in the center this light when stuck when when hit the people the people got anemia we don't know why oh, got it boy what an incident and at least five years this transpired yeah officially officially stop it in 97 to, oh my for, gosh. Was for 1977 to 1978 but we have uh, reports until 1982 five years incredible and now also uh one of the ships and in this uh, report the witness saw this ship oh my gosh with the, the red light 
there's a ray that hit one of the people and inside this object is slender you can see it mm. there were two uh, entities uh wearing like a coverall yeah with black eyes it's not gray because it's taller and there was inside the this object just watching and hitting people with this this ray wow also uh, uh one of the, the ships you know uh it, it was several types of ships slither code uh flying disc uh stingray so we don't know what was there and there was no chance to be a, a secret airplane in 1977 hitting people in the middle of the jungle yeah and this is not a configuration i think we have figured out yet to fly yeah wow you know um I think sometimes um, people take sides, and right now we are seeing some real factionalism in the United States, especially with this very tacit government acknowledgement, the weakest form, but something is in play. And there are people who are saying, this is all a cover for building more advanced weapon systems, and uh, we should, you know, see them as a threat. And really, they are good, and they just want, you know, human beings to evolve and um, develop their spirituality and join with us higher life forms in the universe. I think maybe the wrong question is, are they good or are they bad? They're doing what they're doing for whatever their reasons. However, in a series of incidents like this, where what we can observe is that they are selectively hurting people and hurting the health of people, one has to wonder. Also, I think sometimes, certainly here, people get very caught up in, are they good, are they bad, without thinking that we are probably dealing with a variety of thems coming from different places in this dimension, in other dimensions, from way the heck out in the cosmos to maybe nearer neighbor stars, um, and that they may have the pantheon of feelings and relationships to us that we have to each other from the truly enlightened and empathetic and caring to the pathological and seeing us on a certain level for what we are. We are our worst enemy. We are the pathology on this planet. We are destroying our host organism. We are not a good thing, perhaps in the mind of other intelligences that value this special little planet for their own reasons. Again, behavior like we're describing here, you try to think to yourself, why are they doing what they're doing? Unless it's like a great video game of, oh, I got one. Oh, I got one too. You know? <laughs> I yeah. <it's> just guessing. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Uh, this one is a... Mm. Uh one uh, is, is a frame is a frame of the video ah. of of the the case happened in the here in brazilia mm. it's a paranoia dome where three uh enterprises three businessmen were coming from token change is a state mm. and they saw they was followed by a huge ufo for almost all all the the, the the way to to brazil and this is made was made by a, a military police that always carried a camera and oh. they saw as well with this businessman they saw the ufo in the sky and they start to record this 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 mage and one of this uh businessmen had a, a son there was a professional photographer and he took a amazing and clear photo of this 
uh, UFO I think I sent to you is the one is white in uh, this one is a this object wow in a, in a in a blue uh, background because it was in the night so it was a night you can see the the the, the bright white so uh, powerful that almost clear the uh, the sky and in this photo the UFO looks like a cylinder but uh, regarding the the witnesses this object was like a cross and then change the shape to uh, uh, a discoid object wow it's like a, a, a transformer a metamorph yeah yeah it and goes, uh, yeah. in the in, in one of one of uh opportunity they were in the in the in the road here in Brasilia and they stop it the car and the object stop it in the front of them hovering uh the road and they had to go under the object hmm. and they cr under the object with a maximum speed and then the object goes up again and start to to chase him as uh continue to chase him and they uh, achieved the uh, the Brazilian Dome, the Paranoa Dome, and the object was over uh, the water and split, moving the water like some kind of energy. And then this military police arrived, and he got the camera and he started to film. And this took three, four hours. More than ten people saw it. And then the object just spit away and disappeared. It was 1996. Uh, this video was analyzed, uh, uh, analyzed by, by uh, ufologists here in Brasilia and and people who know the about the the, the video and the cameras, and they never found uh, a kind of uh, a fake because very hard. We well, we're talking about 1996. So this case is one of the best cases here in Brazil, and in Brazil as well. Wow. And now? Is this the, is the, the, the night, the official night of UFOs? Just to uh, an illustration to show how the UFOs chased uh -huh. the, the Brazilian Air Force fighters. Great illustration. It's, my, it's by Rafael Morin. This as Ooh. well. Another powerful one. Yeah, this is just like look. Uh, uh, the pilot saw the, the slides. It's amazing. One of the pilot uh, told to the control uh, in the ground, the tower control in in the ground. That said, "Well, this is a UFO party in the sky." Huh. Wow. Um, let's spend a little time on talking about some of the cases that you sent me uh, abstracts or brief descriptions of that completely intrigue me. Um, in America, I think it was in 1976 or 77 that we first began to get the first serious reports, in this case from law enforcement, of so-called um, cattle mutilations, the abduction of cattle and then the return of the body, but often with advanced medical procedures performed on it and in a state where no predator from an insect to an animal would approach the remains of the animal in question. This is not so much a, um, a, a cattle mutilation case, but in 1970, um, we have the um, Palma Vala um, case where we have an abducted calf. Can you, I mean, people saw it disappear into the air. Can you tell us a little about this case? Yes, it happened in Alegrete, in Rio Grande do Sul, where in, in 1970, mm -hmm. uh, where a, a farmer was, you know, walking in, in, in his in, in this area, and saw a, a, a huge UFO over 
the his cattle, mm. and suddenly this UFO shot a, a type of ray and got this uh, the cattle, one of the the cattle, and abducted, just disappear. We never we, we don't have here in Brazil cattle mutilation. Yeah. We don't have it. It's a very very rare. Uh, we have chupacabra, we have, but we, right. we we don't have the, the, the cattle mutilation. And this abduction of, of, of a cattle was the first time that we know that something like that happened. We have a lot of illustration and drawings showing UFOs, you know, abduction a, a cattle, a mm. cow, something like that. But this is was the was the first time. And uh, this farmer this cowboy he had a cousin that was he was from the air force and he asked him well we have it to to investigate it and they did and they found where the cattle was you know abducted they found a a, a black spot of uh burning grass burning grass mm. and they very rounded perfectly rounded a perfect circle but they never saw they never understand what happened because for almost 10 12 10 or uh, to 12 years this place never grow nothing oh. no grass no uh no insects nothing grew up there where the, the cattle was and uh, when it was right. abducted so uh as i said we never had cattle mutilation here in Brazil, but have a lot of cases very weird as well. <laughs> <laughs> no question. Um, we come to a case that occurred in 1996 where UFOs overfly a dam very near where you are in Brasilia. And they are an assortment of kinds of UFOs, not just one visual type of, of craft or configuration. Can you tell us a little about this incident? Is this the, uh, we have spoke about, about that. It was a ah. in, in Brasilia. Okay. But I have one case that I didn't send to you. Is the João Prestes case happened in the 40s. Uh, João Prestes was getting home when he saw a UFO. And for no reason, this UFO shot him a ray of a beam of light. Damn. And uh, instantly, uh, Jean Presses started to feel sick. And in a couple of hours, his flesh was melted. Oh, my Lord. And leaving his bone, showing his bone. And uh, in seven hours, he was dead. Just like a radiation. Just like uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah, that's what uh, it suffer. sounds like. And uh, this case is very known here in Brazil. Some say that he had already a disease. Some say that no, he or he was hit by a, a, a UFO. Yeah. But I, I I don't record if any other country in the world had so many cases where the UFOs trying to attack yeah. uh, people. And we have a lot of here. So we have the, the village Boas case. He was abducted to have a, a, a sexual relation with an alien. Right. We we have this Jean Presse who, who was killed. We have the, the, the crab uh, island where one, three, two, three, three fishermen were uh, uh, sleeping in, in their boat and uh, a light kill will will uh, one of them with mystery circumstances we don't know so i don't know if it happened in other place in a in a world <clears throat> thiago are there reports from surrounding countries that uh, touch on brazil like paraguay that have the same or even any kind of incidents of these extremely violent attacks that you see in Brazilian UFO studies? We have uh, in, in Venezuela, 
Venezuela, Argentina, and Chile from 1952 to 1955. Mm. We had a type of, uh, I'm looking for here now, uh, we had a, a type of aliens, small aliens, like monkeys with a very hard hair mm. and a helmet. They're trying to uh, abduct uh, two uh, uh, truck drivers in Venezuela. And uh, despite they are very small, they are very strong. And one of the, the, the truck drivers tried to cut the alien with a knife. Oh, boy. When, when, when he hit the, the, the entity, it's like hitting a, in a steel. Huh. So never cut. And uh, they tried to push the entity. The entity, okay, fall back. But came with, uh, toward him harder and try to get him to put it in the, in a in a circular in a, in a spherical ufo and we have the, also uh in paraguay i think uh one been trying to to grab a, a little a little girl and his father tried to fight with him and this this alien something like that grabbed a kind of a box he was in his belt and shoot a ray in this, his man, and he got leukemia and, and died as well. So we have these very weird cases in South America. <laughs> we have also a UFO crash in Argentina in South yeah. in 1995. We have, right. I have, we have in, in South America and Central America, we have very types and different types of UFO cases. Yeah. Is This has been, for me, an incredible way to introduce the different UFO culture, the different characterizations of cases that are so endemic, so defining of our neighbor south of the border, Brazil. Um, I obviously want to thank you so much for joining me tonight. And to leave on a different note, though, um, Again, you and I uh, are examples of how this work can bring people together in the world, and we will be friends always. Um, the part of Brazil where we met, where uh, AJ Javad's conference was held, what is the name of that, that city again? Forge do Iguaçu. Okay. Forge do Iguaçu in Paraná State. Not far from there, we come to a natural area one of the great natural wonders of the world. And by chance, it is where, is it three countries come together at that point? Is it yes. Uruguay, Paraguay, Brazil? Am I remembering no, no, correctly? It's, it's, it's Brazil, it's Brazil, Argentina, and, and Paraguay. It's, okay. it's, a three, it's three frontiers. Okay. It's the, the Cataratas Falls. That's it. And I grew up in New York State. Um, I, I live here still. We are supposedly famous for Niagara Falls. One of the things is a big, very dramatic waterfall. Um, I live in an area, um, rural, 20 minutes drive from here is the second highest falls in New York State. It's just a skinny one. But um, on maybe the first day, the second day of the conference, when everybody was speaking in Portuguese, um, AJ, uh, encourages myself and Richard Dolan and Robert Salas and um, our Norwegian friends, um, uh, Erling Strand and Keth Thorvaldsen to go and enjoy the falls. Okay, well, how dramatic can a waterfall be? Well, of course, nothing prepares you. It's not a waterfall. It's dozens of each one, the most dramatic waterfalls upon waterfalls. By the time we finished there, I was giddy like a child. I mean, I was just, I it's was amazing. overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. <clears throat> and I thought we would end with just a few shots of this extraordinary natural beauty. This is where we first kind of came in and looked and thought, wait a minute. And let me, let me tell you, uh, <laughs> in this photo, this Katarata Falls, this it, it's not full 
I think it's not raining a lot because they are much, much more water. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, <laughs> you could have knocked me over with a feather. This one's full. Everywhere we looked, um, my jaw dropped. I think I shot 500 photos that day and then, you know, knocked it down to about 200 before getting into a little more editing. But it's an amazing place. It is. And then where the mist comes up, it creates this fog effect. I, yeah. You just are overwhelmed by what you see. And you can you can rent a, a boat and go uh, oh, yeah. to the, the, the fog. <laughs> yep. And here is this person uh, who was traveling with me. Maybe you know him. Uh, I don't, um, a certain Richard Dolan. He, it looks like Richard Dolan. It actually yeah. is Richard Dolan. And <laughs> one closing shot here. But, um, Thiago, it has really been a pleasure to have you on the show. And Thank you, we will, friend. of course, stay in regular contact. Hopefully, this coming year, we will have a chance to get together. And again, I want to remind people that your website is I-N-V-E-S-T-I-G-A-C-A. O O V N I dot com dot B R. Next yeah. week's guest will be Greg Bishop, author, columnist, editor, former audio engineer at American Public Media, and host of the terrific long running weekly podcast, Radio Mysterioso. If you've enjoyed this show, please tell your friends. See you next week, same time, same station. Stay well, stand up for what you believe in, and be kind to each other. Ah, thank you, my Thiago, friend. Thiago, what a pleasure. Our two hours really blew by crazy yeah. fast. Yeah, thank you very we, much. Uh -huh. Thank you, Is thank my, you, thank you. Thank you. And I'm looking at some of the comments here, and people want you back already. <laughs> I will wait a little while, but I think when you come back, um, we we will do a show with a number of, of people. The idea in my mind is maybe... Um, a number of people who are not from America who are doing this work, you know, to just discuss it. Um, but again, I, I um, ask that you send my love and best wishes to your wife. Remember Thank me you. to your kids. Um, I love you, my brother. And I love you too, my friend. Thank you very much. I think I, I, I love it. Very good show. Very good show. We talk, yeah. we talk uh, about everything, including ufology. I like yeah. it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I, and the uh, people are very, very kind. Yeah. I, I think also, um, again, as I mentioned, I am going for two audiences, the one that everybody in our field wants, all the people that listen, everybody that, you know, is regular listener or watcher of Coast to Coast, but also everybody else, the bigger audience of new people. And I think now a whole bunch of people who didn't know who you are or who thought they knew who you are now know something about your life. And I have not had anybody complain saying, oh, it's too much about the background. I want more in UFOs. I think people really appreciate this. We become human beings and they can say, he published a book in English that's 500 pages that covers all this material. I need this for my library. And I must learn when other books are coming out in translation. Um, so bravo. And um, Thank you. I will remind people about the book next week because I will do a monologue next week talking about another book. So I, I will bring that in. Otherwise, time for dinner, my brother. And a giant hug to you from America. And we see each other um, on Skype next, I guess. Yes, love you, my friend. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And I hope, well, I got my shot, Pfizer. I think I can, I can go to United States. Pfizer, I can go. Excellent. I think. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.
Bye for now, Thiago. Love you. Bye bye. Love you.